Hi guys, it's Trevor, and this is Discovering Gay History. Okay, so today we are going to do Larry Kramer, playwright and activist. Here we go. Larry Kramer was born in 1935 and is probably most famous for his Oscar-nominated screenplay, Women in Love, and of course his Tony-winning play, The Normal Heart. Larry Kramer went to Yale University. Especially in his freshman year, he suffered with a suicide attempt, loneliness. He felt he was the only gay person there. Um, after his time at Yale, he found a job at Columbia Pictures, where he went on to write his Oscar-nominated screenplay, Women in Love. Uh, he then abandoned the screen and fell in love with the stage and began writing stage scripts. In 1973, he wrote his first play, Sissy's Scrapbook, and in 1978, he wrote his first novel, Faggots. The book Faggots was not uh, critically well acclaimed, nor was it acclaimed in the gay community. Uh, the gay community thought that it did a poor job of, of telling the gay story. It sort of shows uh, the gay community in a not positive light. Even Larry admits that there are no well-meaning characters in it. It was banned from the gay bookstore in Manhattan. Larry couldn't go to the grocery store on Fire Island. He was banned from the grocery store. It, it, it did not do well. So, um, I'm gonna order that right now. In 1980, Frank's friends on Fire Island were getting sick and not getting better. In 1981, the New York Times released their article announcing the beginning of the AIDS crisis. The article was titled, Rare Cancer Seen in 41 Homosexuals. No one was talking about it. The government was not talking about AIDS. Gay men were not talking about AIDS. The New York government was not talking about AIDS. So. In 1982, Larry co-founded the Gay Men's Health Crisis. Uh, it still exists today. And what that organization was doing was drumming up funding and testing for gay men who were suffering from HIV AIDS. There were some conflicting ideas within the organization. Larry Kramer was pointing at the government and at Maricoc at that time that the responsibility lied on them to provide medication and testing and, and awareness, and that was not happening. Larry had some pretty controversial and extreme ideas. Um, doctors were saying that men needed to stop having sex with men, and Larry thought that the gay men's health crisis should be spreading that message. So Larry wrote an article called 1,112 and Counting, and it, it was a an essay that used scare tactics to to inform gay men and and scare them into pulling back. A lot of people didn't think that was going to work. Healthcare workers refused to treat patients with the disease, and Maricoc was not doing anything to help the crisis. In 1983, the GMHC, the Gay Men's Health Crisis, booted Larry Kramer out of the organization. Larry went on a trip to Europe um, to sort of cool off. He wrote The Normal Heart. The Normal Heart played at the Public Theater downtown in 1985 and is to this day the longest running play at the public. So The Normal Heart is a play set between 1981 and 1984, and its main character is a writer named Ned Weeks, and he is providing care for his lover who is dying of this terrible unnamed disease. So in 1987, Larry Kramer co-founded ACT UP, AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power. This organization acted with civil disobedience to raise awareness and funds for those fighting the virus. So the first agency that they targeted was the FDA. The FDA was providing roadblocks for medical testing and, and medicinal testing to get the medicine that the people who were fighting the virus needed so desperately. Uh, most people in the medical field who, who work with HIV and AIDS patients credit Larry for opening the floodgates 
of awareness and getting funding to the right places. While Larry was working with ACT UP, he was arrested dozens of times, blocking traffic, protests, all sorts of civil disobedience. In 1998, Larry went in for a pretty standard surgery, and that's when he discovered that he too was HIV positive. In 2001, Larry's liver was shot from also being diagnosed with hepatitis B. He needed a liver transplant badly. People who were living with HIV at that time were considered to not be eligible for transplants because of their short life expectancy. He was able to fight that and was able to get on a donor list in Pittsburgh. He said this about it. We shouldn't face a death sentence because of who we are or who we love. In 2013, Larry married his partner, David. They had been on and off again since the 80s and lived together in the Greenwich Village here in New York. We'll see you tomorrow.